Here on the OCU Athletics Update, we're talking to Delaware Resource Group Superstar Athlete of the Week, Ailey Thompson, senior forward from Oklahoma City, leads the women's soccer team in points so far this year. And talk about your last game against Mid-America Nazarene. You scored and uh, had three assists in the game as well. Yes. Um, last game was really good. I would say overall it was a big team success. Um, we came off of a loss uh, the previous week, and we worked really hard during practice. Um, we were trying to sort out you know, whatever things had made us fail in the game before. And I think um, that all, all together we came as a group full force. We made a few changes uh, in our lineup that made a big difference. And I think that um, every single person on the team put forth an effort that just we, we, couldn't, we couldn't lose that game. So I think that that win showed um, our teamwork and a lot of hard work and that just how that plays out and we won the game so it was a great success yeah talk about playing on this uh, on this OCU team some of the players that you have around you on this roster um I would say honestly every person on our team uh, is an incredible player I'm lucky and honored to be playing with them um one of my best friends on the team Allison Warsham especially in that game specifically against Mid-America um, she put herself in a role that she hadn't played before and, and just absolutely dominated. She um, was winning balls and uh, playing a different position is a really hard thing, especially when it's um, when you're under pressure. We came off a loss. We're trying to change things up. Um, and Allison really did an amazing job just being a leader in that game. Um, I think we had a few freshmen. We had a freshman score goal, her first goal, uh, Sarah Ricks, uh, her first collegiate goal. Um, I think that every single player uh, on the team is awesome. I mean, I, I just love playing with all of them. So, <laughs> Talk about the path that brought you here to OCU. Well, I actually, my first three college um, seasons were played at Oklahoma Baptist University. I played there. Uh, I committed there my junior year of high school. So um, I, I was there for a while, and then circumstances led me here. Um, Coach Harvey, when I met him, it was just um, – I, I had to be here. I wanted to be at Oklahoma City University. I had heard about the program, and I knew that this is where I needed to be and wanted to be my senior year. Um, Oklahoma Baptist changed divisions, and so I really wanted to stay in um, this conference. Um, and I knew playing for Coach Harvey would be an honor, and so that's why I decided to come here for my senior year. You've got kind of a unique perspective for a collegiate athlete. You've been married for nearly two years. Yeah. Uh, talk about uh, how that how that works ba balancing college athletics and, and the family life as well. Well, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people ask me that, actually. Um, I did get married at a young age. I was 19 when I married my husband. Um, he's a soccer player as well, and he has always been my biggest fan and supporter. Um, I would say, honestly, people... People would think it's really difficult, but when you have a husband and a family that is behind you and supporting you, it's really not that hard. And you're playing the game that you love. Um, you know, I would say our relationship is definitely my biggest strength, and um, our relationship is founded in Christ. And that's something that I think if you're following the Lord and following your heart, then you're not going to be led astray. So that's how, I'm, that's how I feel about that. <laughs> What's your major here to see you? Um, I'm a humanities major. What are your plans uh, following college? Um, well, right now I've been working in human resources, so I plan to um, continue pursuing that path. My husband is studying um, for law school, so we, we don't know where he's going to end up right now, but wherever he goes, I will follow and hopefully just continue along that career path. All right. Thanks very much. We're talking to Delaware Resource Group Superstar Athlete of the Week, Ailey Thompson, and you can follow the Stars soccer teams on OCSports.com. There's a call to be answered. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Learn more at NAIA.org.
Here on the OCU Athletics Update, we're talking to OCU volleyball coach Kyle Steele. The Stars are off to an unbeaten start in Sooner Athletic Conference play. And coach, your 3-0 in conference play. Recap those three games for us. Uh, started out on the road against John Brown, who has been a pretty uh, serviceable opponent for us uh, in the past. But uh, got a nice 3-0 win, uh, held him to eight points in the second set. So I was super impressed with our uh, defensive effort that night. Uh, and our, we had the offense to go along with it. And then uh, at Mid-America Christian, another 3-0 win. And then out, south, out Southwestern Christian uh, on Tuesday night. And that was uh, another, another nice win where I got to play um, a lot of freshmen and a lot of, uh, a lot of players that night. So it was, it was good for us, uh, a good experience for us. You had a challenging non-conference season, playing second-ranked Biola at one point and also 12th-ranked Northwestern out of Iowa in a tournament setting. What does that uh, kind of tough non-conference schedule do for your team going forward in the conference play? Uh, it, it, you know, it was a little scary when we lined up. Uh, at, when you go to Biola, who is now number one in the country, uh, and I throw out my starting lineup and realize that I don't have any returning starters from the year before. Um, so it was a little uh, nervy, but I, my team responded really well. Um, we're super young with 11 freshmen and sophomores. Uh, we played excellent offense. I think there was a combined, you know, 42 digs between the two teams. Um, so n not a lot of defense going on in the gym that day, but our offense looked great. It was a, a really competitive match, uh, 23 in the first set, I think, and then in the 20s again in the second set. Just, you know, you know early season, we were still working some kinks out. But uh, went five with Northwestern, uh, who is number 11 now. Um, Felt like we uh, probably should have had that one in the fourth set. We had some controversial uh, officiating go our way, uh, but uh, needed to respond in the fifth set and didn't didn't quite have enough in the tank. Uh, and then also uh, played Westmont, who is number 16 at the time at, right now uh, as well. So uh, playing three top 15 schools, um, being really competitive. Uh, those are only three losses right now. Uh, I think is just. Uh, building blocks for a young team to to get where we want to go at the end of the season. And I think that as long as we make a steady in, incline to in November, that it, was, it was all going to be worth it uh, in the preseason. So, you've had three players so far garner players of the week in their respective categories. You've had Hannah Mitchum be setter of the week. You've had Danny Chase as well as Tori Leisure. Talk about those three. Well, Hannah's been <clears throat> three out of the four uh, weeks we've done in the awards has been setter of the week, um, and we didn't have an attacker of the week until um, this last week, which was Tori, uh, which is kind of speaks to our to our balance in our offense. Uh, if you know she's dishing out, um, you know high high assists in the conference, but yet we're not having you know individual accolades on offense. That just means that. Uh, I think we're, that we're loaded at all five position, hitting positions around her, uh, and she's done a really nice job distributing the ball, um, you know, taking taking the leadership role on the team and uh, really getting the job done. Uh, sp sped us up tremendously, running a lot faster offense than we have. Uh, so I can't say enough about her. And then, uh, you know, Tori playing middle um, finally kind of found her a home. Uh, we kind of moved her positions for the last. I think she's played a different position every year since her freshman year. Uh, and she's really excelled since we, uh, you know, solely trained her as a middle blocker in the spring. And uh, I think she's still around seventh in the country in hitting percentage right now. So um, she's just been killing it so far. Uh, and then Danny's a newcomer, uh, but uh, has, has played really solid defense for us. And we like where we're at in the libero position as well. You've gotten contributions from several newcomers, including Stephanie Nell, who currently is your leader in kills. Talk about some of the other new, new players. Well, like I said, we had zero returning starters, so uh, we were pretty much all uh, newcomers from last year, even even the ones that were in the program that are now you know playing this year uh, as seniors. But uh, Stephanie Nell is a transfer from Wingate University who is a super dynamic outside hitter, um, brings power, brings brains, uh, can uh, you know, drop in shots when she needs to, and has just been a really uh, exceptional leader for being a newcomer as a sophomore. Um, we have two true freshmen playing right now, um, one from Southern California, California, excuse me, uh, Fia Faani, uh, a couple of Samoan kids. She's uh, just played right side for the first time ever uh, on Thursday night against Mid-America Christian, so she's figuring out a new position, but uh, kind of coming into her own a little bit. And then uh, uh, our other freshman from Oahu, uh, Shekinah Clark has been uh, kind of playing all over, played some right side, just playing some DS for us right now, played some left side. So we're uh, kind of trying to find out where she's going to suit us best, but been really solid for us defensively in, in the blocking aspect too. So we're happy about, uh, we had seven new faces um, since last fall and we're excited about all of them. 
no returning starters, but you do have some returners on the team. Sure. Uh, also in, including Jamie Renwick, who was mm -hmm. hurt for a lot of last year, I believe. And yes. uh, she's kind of back uh, contributing for you. Who are some of the players who have come back this year and contributed? Man, I, I, you never can predict uh, what someone's going to do in their senior year. Usually it's going to go one of two ways. They're going to peak or they're going to kind of be done and ready to move on in life. And we've had the... Uh, awesome fortune of that we have three seniors right now especially that are peaking in their senior year and playing their best volleyball Hannah being one of them obviously with the award she's gotten in the last four weeks uh, but Tori was another one that we already talked about but Jamie um, you know I don't think we ever saw what Jamie was fully capable of last year I think um, you know she would she was trying to play through some injuries that she probably had no business playing through uh, and then finally at the conference tournament last year I think she was almost healthy again. We saw her, you know, we, she, we played her against OBU and she was uh, a really dynamic force for us in, in the conference tournament last year. And so that gave me hope that we were going to see uh, some bright spots out of her this year. And she has um, stepped up to the plate. I mean, uh, she was like ninth in the country in hitting percentage for a while, um, averaging a little over three kills a set. Um, and uh, we are really excited about where we're at um, as far as being a balanced offense and uh, you know, two really good outsides, two really good middles. Um, another newcomer that I didn't talk about, a transfer from, from Colombia, Mano Soraro from France originally, but um, we are um, you know, probably 100% better in the middle than we were last year and um, really excited to see where the offense on this team can go with the defense to back it up. So. As a result of your play, you've uh, started getting votes in the in the polls in the NAI. Talk about the significance of that national recognition. Um, I think it's it's a good recruiting tool. Um, I don't know that there's a whole lot of significance in kind of where we're at right now. I think we jumped from 20 to 46 votes this week, um, trying to break into that top 25. I think you know had we have you know knocked off a Northwestern or a Westmont, I think that may have changed things. But we have another chance this Saturday uh, against Wayland Baptist. Uh, who is 19th, I believe, right now. So I think if we can you know, knock them off, it's just going to gather more interest. But I think we've caught the eye of some people when playing that tough non-conference schedule um, you know, and, and some of the national Raiders. So uh, I think it's good for the program. Um, you know, Really, in, right now where we're at, unless you're in the top 12 at the end of the season, then you're not guaranteed anything. you still got to go win your conference tournament. So I don't know that there's a whole lot of significance in that realm. But I think it is, um, it's... it's Nice to have recognition that you're heading in the right direction, and I think that's um, you know positive reinforcement for the girls on the team to say that hey we're doing things right and this is uh, this is the direction we're going. So it's been it's been positive at least in the locker room. All right, coach. Thanks very much. We're talking to OCU volleyball coach Kyle Steele. You can follow the stars on OCUSports.com.